so today we're going to be doing some enchiladas. Uh, you can get an enchilada kit, such as this one. Uh, it will bring you the tortillas and it will bring you some seasoning, which we'll use later and I'll show you. First thing you want to do, you want to grab some garlic and some onion and chop it. I will be chopping quite a lot of garlic because you will need some for the vegetable and some for the chicken that we'll be preparing. You want to chop your garlic a lot. Please don't mind the technique, okay? FYI, I am not a chef. I just enjoy to cook a lot for myself and my partner. And today I'm having some guests in, so I'll be preparing these beautiful enchiladas that I've done before. But I decide to show how am I doing them. Now that we have them all chopped within a considerable size, you want to have some smaller and other, some bigger other pieces. Garlic tends to burn quite quick, so you don't want to have them too small either, otherwise you take the risk of having the taste of garlic, burned garlic within your food. But this is a good amount to use for our vegetables and our chicken. Now we're doing my favorite part, onion. So I have a serious problem with onions. I've tried all kinds of different tricks, DIYs, life acts, you call it, you name it. I will always be crying. Doesn't matter what I do, I can't contain my tears when it comes to, to onion. So I've recently learned by a chef, this is what causes you the tears. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut just this bit. You want to do small cuts within the onions. And I'm about to start to cry. Oof, you're an aggressive one, bitch. Then you want to chop it within half. And with your knife, you want to just go and make small cubes out of it. Guys, I'm not joking. It does get really bad. There we go, the second half.
So, one onion chop is quite a big portion. Uh, I'm cooking for about five to six people today. Um, and I will clean film it because otherwise I'm not going to be able to stay in the kitchen and finish cooking. Okay, we'll be crying within an hour or so when we start cooking again. But I'm constantly crying because of onion, okay? It's not easy. And that's why I would never be able to work as a chef on full time. <laughs> Next, we'll be doing some peppers. I always like to get a pack like this because you get three different colors. Normally, I get a green pepper which has and brings a nice flavor to it. But there was none, so I guess these ones will do. But what you want to do, you want to remove this bit from your pepper. You want to slice it and you want to remove all of these seeds from it. Once they look like this, that you remove most of the seeds, you want to rinse them through water. Big advice, always rinse your fruits and vegetables through water. entirely up to you maybe you like them bigger maybe you like small cubes I will be chopping mine quite small because later on when they go to the pan fryer you want to have them again up to you some people like it the way I'm just slicing it I will cut it in small pieces because it's easier to cook even that we're just gonna be using a pan fryer for it and you want to have them properly cooked before you done you do your enchiladas Once you've done the peppers, we're going to carrots. Chopped some carrots and I've chopped some tomatoes, but unfortunately there was no recording camera on that moment. And I also have chopped separately uh, some spring onion. In here we have, as we've seen, all of the peppers, carrots and tomatoes that you haven't seen because my camera didn't record it. After you have all of your veg prep, you can put them on the side and we be cleaning the chop board and the knife and we'll be chopping the chicken. Uh, I normally get these breasts because they're easy to cut and I can make my own cut and my own size rather than get the Corvettes that they already have um, chopped chicken. I don't enjoy those ones much, but it's a preference of yours, it's up to you. We're using these ones. So, now we are chopping our chicken. Okay, I 
our chicken is done. Uh, normally I'll just throw whatever liquids there are in here and I keep it in here clean film until I do start cooking it because first I will be preparing the rice and the vegetables until I do move on to the chicken. We're gonna use this and we're gonna wrap it in cooking film again, which I have no idea what I left off. There we go. So now, once our prep, this is how I like to organize. I have the chicken cat, I have the vegetables, I have the onion that goes with the vegetables, I have garlic for the vegetables and the chicken, and I have spring onion for later. Once I have all of these in here prepared, I'll move on on to the cooker. Once we have all our prep done, we will start with the rice. I always have hot water in the kettle. You want to make a plain simple rice because obviously the rice is entirely just to complement the enchiladas inside. Uh, I use butter for my rice. And I always use a tiny bit of garlic paste as well. It has a nice, well, it has nice fat to add to the rice, and it has a great taste of garlic as well, which I really like. Next, I like to add my beautiful pepper. And I don't normally add salt to my food because I cook with a lot of spices, peppers and all. But because I ha isn't, I'm not cooking just for myself and my partner, today we're adding a tiny bit of salt to our food. Hopefully it won't be unsalted for me. You want to turn on the stove at the very minimum with all of the stuff that we just put in. You want to add one cup of rice and two of water later on. So every time you use one cup of rice, you add two of water. I'm only going to be doing two cups of rice. Two and a half and the garlic paste to start to melt you want to involve all of your rice in it as you can see here you want to allow your butter to melt and you want to mix all your rice with it you want to have it all with the same yellowish color that you will get and at the very minimum, keep in mind that you need to have it at very minimal, otherwise you're going to end up burning everything. You just want to refry it and make sure it all has the same, they are all the same color that every single rice has catched. Some butter, some garlic, some of the pepper that we've put in as well. your rice looks like this you want to add the cups of water so we've added two and a half 
which means we're going to be adding five cups of water to our rice. You want to stir it a few bits just to involve all of the rice on the water. Make sure there is no rice stuck within the pan. And we're going to put it to a side onto this one and allow it to cook within the minimum. And we're going to allow it to stay here still. Right, so once we leave our rice over there, we're going to start with all of the veggies. And for the veg, all you want is a small bit of olive oil. And you want to turn it on for now. To this bit of olive oil, you just want to add initially all of the onion and get ready because we're going to be frying again very soon. You want to do, you want to involve all of your onion on the olive oil and allow it to stay here free frying until it gets golden. Once you've noticed that your onion is getting really, really golden, you want to add a little bit of the garlic that we chopped earlier. We'll keep half the chicken. If it has this nice golden color, then you want to add all of the veggies in. You want to try to mix it all with the onion that has been, the onion and the garlic that has been stir fried already. And once you get them all in, you want to add, I like to add some aromatic of this. Uh, it's really nice, um, it's all purpose seasoning. It adds a very nice taste of garlic to all of the food. You want to add some more black pepper because you know I love black pepper. As you will see later on, the portion will get way, way smaller than this once everything is still fried. You want to add a bit more now. Do never add too much of this because then you might have it, you might find it too salty because again, I don't normally cook with salt. And if you don't do either, then don't add it, or don't add much of it, because it will get your food quite salty if you put too much. You want to check on your rice to see how is the magic going. Rice is almost running out of water, which means it should be cooked very quickly.
smells nice in here. You want to add to these beautiful boys what I like to call the magic powder. So it's just smoked paprika. There is nothing really magic about it. Then you want to add this. Obviously, I didn't follow the instructions that comes with the enchilada kit. I do it on my own way. They say to add these with the pouches that they have inside, but I like to add a bit of the powder right now within the veggies and later on on the chicken as well. I think it focus more. It will concentrate more the flavor within the ingredients you're putting on it rather than on the sauce that we're going to do later on. So you want to use half of it for your vegetables and you want to keep half of it for your chicken and you also want to add a small spoon of tomato sauce I use tomato and roast garlic and you want to stir it all over to make sure every single bit of your pan fry has the seasoning Right, so what you want to do now, you want to start cooking your chicken. So we want to be moving this pan fryer to here on the minimum of heat possible. And just keep an eye on it, you will have to steer it every now and then. So you just want to keep it in here. And we're gonna move on, move on to our chicken. So the rice was ready, and because I have big pan fryers and a very small stove, I just put it on the side. It will finish to cook on its own with the heat the pan still has. And we're gonna be doing our chicken now. Again, you just want a tiny bit of olive oil on the pan fry. I'm also adding a soup spoon of this special oil. This is my own olive oil marinated within some chili flakes, some peppers, also some rosemary and um, thyme. It's really nice if you want to do meat, especially steak. This one is really, really cool to have. Although I prefer to have it marinated with fresh Portuguese chilies that we love to call malagueta, but given that I don't have it here, chili flakes, that's the treat just as well. I will add just a tiny bit of butter as well. And you want to add salt on it because we haven't put any salt on our meat when we prepare it. It's optional, you can put it here, you can put it straight to the meat once you prepare it first. It's entirely up to you. We want to be checking on our vegetables. They look almost ready. Obviously, peppers and onion, um, peppers and carrots, they do take quite some time to cook just on this steam stir fry. So you don't want to have any rush. Just make sure you keep the stove on to the very barely minimum, and you just keep having a look at it. Once you add these, we're gonna add some more of my magic powders. Some smoked paprika as well. The black pepper. And it's time to turn on our chicken pot. We will be adding this half, halfway cooking the chicken. We don't have to add it in now. 
just make sure before you put the chicken all of this is nicely mixed in I'm turning off the veg um, we can they are pretty much done and as it stays the heat within the pan fryer they will just finish up to do so once this is boiling you want to add your remaining garlic and make sure your stove is not too high otherwise all of the garlic will burn off quite quickly and you won't taste it will be as nice you want to add a very nice ingredient I like to use white wine it does have an amazing taste Add on to the chicken and everything together later. Problem is, you want to stir it and allow the alcohol to evaporate onto the sauce, but not entirely. You want to add your chicken right about now to it. And you want to spread your chicken again. You want to try to separate as many pieces as possible within the pan fryer. That's why I have such a big saute. And now you can raise um, the flame of your stove all the way because you want your chicken to be cooked thoroughly. Once your chicken does look like this and halfway through cooked, you want to add the rest of the spices that we've kept. When you mix it all, you want to make sure that you catch it within the sauce that you have on your saute, but also on the chicken. And now you have this beautiful sauce. And you just allow your chicken to finish to cook. And once the chicken is ready, we will be finishing the veg, adding the spring onion that we haven't had yet. And we'll be able to start putting our enchiladas together. Right, so I've left the chicken cooking in here. Right, so chicken will be finishing to cook over here and I'll put the vegetables back on You want to stir it They look amazing and you want to add these bad boys to the conversation But yeah, it's in, essentially this is how you want your vegetables to look. You don't want to get them soggy, you don't want it to get them in a big, mushy uh, vegetable pan fryer. So this is how you want your veggies done. So once everything is cooked, you want to grab a tortilla, you want to spread the rice, nice layer, you want to give it a full spoon also with the vegetables, add chicken on top, Now you're going to be adding some grated cheese inside. Mozzarella is the nicest to be fair with you, but if you like 
some other stronger cheese, feel free. And what I do next, I just roll the tortilla and I spike it with the toothpicks to make sure it still stands as a wrap. And you just place it on the tray and you will do it with all of the tortillas from the pack. Obviously I had to get some extra because um, the package only comes to serve four. So I guess I think it's like eight tortillas, but I cooked enough food to make way more than eight tortillas. salsa sauce that you have in it. I'm adding some of the magic powder again. Just a little bit. And some black pepper. I don't actually like the sauce. It's just because it will make a lot of a difference. Um, later on when you put it on top of the tortillas so I might as well just add my own flavor to it some chili flakes to give it a nice spice flavor although most of these it is hot spice already and you're going to stir it until it boils. So this is the sauce. You don't want to have it too liquid but you don't want to have it too thick either. So this is about right and we just need to keep stirring it until it boils and then we'll put it on top over here. Once 
because the sauce is boiled, you want to just lay over a tiny bit of sauce on top. On top of the tortillas, essentially. cheese or a lot more depending on how you like cheese 180 by now you want to place them in the oven And you want to set the timer for roughly 10 minutes and let the magic work. <laughs> 